Hello friends, in this video let us discuss steady stage analysis of load frequency control. So in the last video we have seen the complete block diagram representation of the load frequency control. So from that block diagram representation we shall analyze the steady state analysis of this load frequency control. So if I give you the revision of the block diagram, so basically we are having the input that is the commanded increase in power that is delta pc of s and we are having the block as k s g upon 1 plus s into t s g so this is the gain of the speed governor time constant of the speed governor this is s and this will be your delta of y s which is nothing but the speed changer setting and again we are having the turbine block so this is for the speed governor block and this is for the turbine block here we are having kt upon 1 plus s into ttt and here we are having the output that is delta pt of s which is nothing but equal to delta pg of s so you are having a summary here and from here you are having a load that is delta pd of s so this will be plus and this will be minus and again we are having the block of the uh, generated load model or you can say the power system so this is kps upon 1 plus s into tps so the output is the delta f of s and we are having a feedback load that is 1 by r and this will be minus so this is minus and this is plus so this is the complete block diagram representation of the load frequency control of an isolated power system so here we can see the two important incremental that is the two important input incremental to the system is one is delta pc of s and the other one is delta pd of s so this delta pc of s is the speed change setting and this is your change in load so these are the two important input incrementals to the load frequency control system so here what we can do to understand the steady state analysis first of all we we make the steady state that is a speed changer setting to be a fixed setting so i'll make the speed changer to have a fixed setting that means there will be no changes in pc of s that is delta pc of s will be equal to zero so delta pc of equal to zero that is i am making the speed changer to have a fixed setting fixed setting that means the changes in the uh, changes in the speed changer will be equal to zero and uh, you are just observing the steady ch steady state changes in the delta fs with respect to changes in the load so with respect to changes in the load you are observing the steady state changes in the frequency by putting your delta pc is equal to zero and this state of operation is named as the governor free operation this is named as the governor free operation so sometimes in the viva in the viva they may ask you what is governor free operation then you can simply say that the speed changer will be having a fixed setting and this is done at some scheduled frequency so your scheduled frequency will be generally some 50 hertz so this is done at scheduled frequency and you are just observing the steady state changes in the frequency with changes in the load so now if you have studied in the control system that is uh, you are having some summer here and there is a block here let me say this is a and there is an output and let me say there is a b here feedback gain and this is going again back to the summer so for this to determine the transfer function so let me say g of s is a transfer function so let me say x is the input y is the output so this will be y of s upon x of s will be equal to a upon 1 plus a b so this is the transfer function what you what you can find so here also for a sudden change in the load demand by an amount delta p d we shall see the change in the system frequency that is delta f so the sudden change here implies a step signal and this value will be delta pd as we are considering the sudden change in load demand by an amount delta pd now when i consider a unit step signal this will be having one and the laplace of this 
input signal will be 1 upon s and for this the Laplace will be delta PD of s upon s. So, as you are considering a governor free operation where delta PCS is equal to 0 and we are just observing the changes in the that is a steady state changes in the frequency with respect to changes in the load. So, that means the input here we, we are having the Laplace of the input will be delta PD of s upon s. So, now what you can do is as the PCS will be equal to 0 you can cut off this portion you can cut off the summer and you can join it from here ok. So, from here you can notice that this is the input input signal upon s I will write here also. So, this is the input signal and this block will be acting as A and this block will be acting as B and you can, if I write it as H1 this is H2 and this is H3. So, your B will be simply the multiplication of these transfer functions H1, H2, H3. So, similarly we shall write the transfer function here. So, your Y of S is nothing but delta F of S here and your X of S will be equal to delta PD of PD upon S or delta PD of S upon S. But you can see here the sim signs also this is a positive and this is negative. So, we will get here minus delta PD of S upon S. So, if I write the transfer function it will be delta F of S at delta PC of S is equal to 0. This will be given by your A. A is KPS KPS upon 1 plus S into TPS upon 1 plus A into B. So, again A is KPS upon 1 plus S into TPS into your B is H1, H2, H3. So, you can multiply this transfer function blocks so that is transfer functions 1 by R into KSG upon 1 plus S into TSG into KT upon 1 plus S into TTT into. So, here if you write Y of S it will be given by A upon 1 plus AB into X of S. So, here I have written Y of S. So, I should write here X of S and your X of S is minus delta PD of S upon S because here the symbol we are having is negative. So, this will be, so I will write minus here simply and this will be delta PD of S upon S. Now, what we can do is we can multiply the numerator and denominator with 1 plus S into TPS upon 1 so that I can eliminate this denominator term in a both numerator and denominator so that we can get the easy calculations. So, again here 1 plus S into TPS upon 1. So, you can see this will get cancelled and we will be having KPS upon. So, if I multiply this, so earlier you are having like this. Now, if I multiply this, this will be 1 plus S into TPS plus if you multiply with this term, your 1 plus STPS, 1 plus STPS get cancelled and you will be having KPS into KSG into KT by R upon 1 plus S into TSG into 1 plus S into TT into delta PD of S upon S and we are having the symbol minus here. So, this is delta F of S at delta PC of S is equal to 0. Now, in order to find the steady state, what we can do is for the steady state of this function, that is the steady state of the output y. So, your y will be given by the steady state limit s tending to 0 s into y of s. So, this is the steady state of y. Steady state limit s tending to 0 s into y of s. Similarly, here we can write delta f is a steady state change in frequency at delta pc of s will be equal to 0. You can simply write delta pc is equal to 0. It will be equal to. So, here you can what you can do is you can put limit s tending to 0 s into this whole term. This whole term here so that you can have delta f of s 
at delta p c of x is equal to zero here. So once you keep, uh, once you plug this term here, so you are having numerator s. So your s s it will cancel, and once you apply the limits to this function, so this term will become one. So this will become one because s will be zero. So zero into t p s will be zero. So this will be one, and this will be one, and this will be one. So you are left with terms. This is k p s upon one plus k p s k s g into k t upon r. Now, in the load frequency control of an isolated power system, your k t is the turbine gain is fixed. Your k p s is the power system gain is fixed. And you can adjust the speed governor gain by changing the various lengths of the links. So, in the speed governor, uh, there is a turbine speed governor system. We have seen there, are, there is a linkage mechanism A, B, C, C, D, E. So, where the lengths of the link are L1, L2, L3, L4. So, by changing those uh, length, uh, links length, you can adjust the speed governor such that it can be assumed you can uh, you can adjust the speed governor to. Such a assumption where we can write your k s g into k t will be approximately equal to one, and your k p s here it can be given by one upon v, and this v is the damping coefficient, or you can say the power system parameter, and uh, it will be given by your b will be given by from the uh, generator load model we have seen the b is do p d upon do f that is the changes in the load. With respect to changes in the frequency, and if I write in write it in per unit, this will be upon P R. So this is expressed in per unit megawatt per unit change in frequency. That is unit change in frequency L R hertz. So this is your B value, and uh, you can put K S G K T is equal to one. So now now we shall plug these terms here. So once you plug these terms here, you can write K P S is equal to this is uh, one upon B. So sorry, I am forgetting minus sign here. So again, this is minus one upon b, and this will be one plus. This will be one. So this will be one upon b r, and here we are having delta p d. So this is delta p d, and uh, again we are having here. This is delta p d. This is delta p d, and uh, from here what you can do is again you can multiply b upon one here, again b upon one here. So that you will get the block as minus one upon. So this will be b plus one by r into delta p d. So your delta s will be equal to this into this delta p d. So if I say this is y and this is m and this is x. So this is y is equal to m x. You will be having a line line equation. And you are having a negative slope because the sign is negative here, and this is just the droop or the slope you can say. And uh, it it has been observed that for a for the you can adjust your r. R is the speed regulation. So speed regulation of the governor. You can adjust the r such that there are small changes in the frequency. That is the frequency change is just five percent from no load to full load. So in that fashion, you can adjust the value of R uh, such that you can make the delta F changes to be small, and uh, this B value will be very much smaller than R value because your B value will be uh, your B will be 0.01 megawatt per hertz, and your 1 by R value will be 1 by 3. That is, R is equal to 3 and B is equal to 0.01. So you can neglect B in comparison to R value. So that you will be having the terms delta F will be at P C of S is equal to zero. That is delta P C. It will be equal to uh, simply minus R into delta P D. So here the steady state changes in frequency with respect to changes in the load demand is governed by your speed governor regulation. That is R, and we are having the negative slope. So if you plot the load frequency characteristics. Of this equation, so I will plot it here. So we will be having two loads. So let me consider first 100% load and then 60% load. So at both loads, we are having the speed change to be a fixed setting at scheduled frequency. 
So speed change has a fixed setting such that your delta P is equal to zero, and at that we are maintaining the scheduled frequency of the system. So let me say I am having a, this is frequency, frequency, and this is the percent load, percent load. So this is again one zero three, and this is, let me say this is hundred percent load, and this is sixty percent load. So you will be having the negative drop. So drop D R O O P is negative. And the slope will be minus one upon b plus one by r, and this will be approximately equal to minus r. So you can have a proportional linear incremental or proportional relationship between the delta f and delta p d because as you change the value of r, there will be a small change in the frequency. So r is almost uh, affecting very less to your frequency. So you can consider it to be a little constant. So the delta f and delta p d are almost proportional. So as the delta P D decreases from 100% to 60%, your frequency also decreases. So this is the low frequency characteristics. Now we shall uh, talk some other areas related to this steady state analysis. And it has been observed that in an isolated power system, where we are controlling the load frequency, so the increased load demand, that is delta P D, can be met partly by so that is we are speaking under steady state. So this increased load demand can be partly met by increased generation that is delta P G due to steam valve opening. So if you open your steam valve, there will be more steam and there will be more output. And the second thing is it can be partly met by decreased decreased load demand due to decreasing frequency decreased load demand due to de decrease in frequency because uh, in the low frequency characteristics you have seen uh, if i say this is 105 this is 103 this is frequency in percentage and uh, this is percent load so here for 105 the load is 100 percent and for 103 the here the load is 60 percent so as the frequency is decreased the load is also decreased so in that way Due to decrease in frequency, you can decrease the load demand so that it can be partly met by this. Uh, you can partly meet the increased load demand, but this due to this, the contribution is very less. So, very less contribution is done to meet the increased load demand by this part 2, and most of the most part is met by this increased power generation due to steam valve opening. Now, Earlier we have considered the effect of sudden change in the load demand. Now we shall consider the effect of sudden change in speed changes setting that is delta PCS by putting or by fixing this load demand constant. So now the second case we are considering is delta PD of S will be 0. So that means the load demand that is the change in load demand will be 0 and we are considering the effect of speed changes setting on the frequency. So here again what you can do is you can cut off this delta PDS from here and uh, these three blocks can be multiplied and these three blocks H1, H2, H3 can be given by A is equal to multiplication of these three transfer functions and this is your B and again for a sudden change in the speed change setting means the input here will be delta PC of S upon S and here it is plus. So you will be having plus delta PCS upon of S upon S. So if you write again the formulas, so this is delta F of S at delta PD of S is equal to 0, it will be given by the transfer functions H1, H2, H3 will be A. So you can write it as KSG, KSG upon 1 plus S into TSG into KT upon 1 plus 1 plus TT into KPS upon 1 plus S into TPS. So this is your A and upon 1 plus AB. Now again A will be this. Similarly, I will write KSG upon 1 plus S into TSG into KT upon 1 plus TT into KPS upon 1 plus S into TPS into B is 1 by R. 
So this is the transfer function and uh, this is the output and again your input will be delta pc of s upon s. So this is the transfer function you get. Now again what you can do here it is just you can take LCM or you can what you can do is you can multiply with these three terms on numerator and denominator so you will get this term gets cancelled. So simply I am writing here this as KSG into KT into KTS upon this will be 1 plus S into TSG into this will be 1 plus this is S into TT into 1 plus S into TPS plus KSG KT KPS by R. So by dividing these three terms on numerator and denominator, they will get cancelled here and uh, they will get multiplied this with this one and they will get cancelled with this second term from here. So you ultimately you will get this expression and again if we consider the steady state for this that is steady state will be delta F at delta PD to be 0 it will be given by limit S tending to 0 S into delta F of S at delta PD of S is equal to 0. So again we are having here this is delta PC of S upon S. So again will S S will get cancelled and wherever you are having S S S they will become 1. So this term will become 1, this term will become 1, this term will become 1 and uh, you are left with your delta F at delta PD is equal to 0. It can be given by KSG into KT into KPS upon this will be 1 plus KSG KT KPS upon R and again earlier we have assumed that your KSG into KT is approximately equal to 1 and your KPS it will be equal to 1 by B. So this is into delta PC. This is into delta PC. So there will be no S terms, Laplace terms here. We have removed S from uh, this equation and S from here. So we, we just got out from the Laplace domain. So by taking the steady state, steady state it is the change it is not in the Laplace domain. Remember this equation is not in the Laplace domain. So earlier also I wrote uh, by mistake in the Laplace domain. Please uh, rectify that. This steady state it won't be in the Laplace domain. So this is delta PC and this is simply delta PD and this is you can see this is small f. And now by putting these values you can get again this, is, this will be equal to 1 plus 1 upon B plus this will be uh, B plus this will be uh, what will get this is uh, 1 so this will be 1 by B and this will be 1 plus this is uh, 1 by B R so again you divide with B B so this will be this is again delta P C and uh, this will be uh, divided B on numerator and denominator you will get this is 1 plus B by B plus 1 by R into delta PC for this delta F at delta PD is equal to 0. Now we have considered the two cases. First case is delta PC of S is equal to 0. Second case delta PD of S is equal to 0. Now let us consider the effect of both and combine these two equations. So earlier we are having the equation due to 1. Uh, we are having the equation as that is a delta F at PC is equal to 0 that is delta PC is equal to 0. So at this juncture we are having this is minus 1 upon B plus 1 by R into delta this is into delta this is PD. Okay, This is at first juncture for this, this is for first consideration and this is for second consideration. Now, 
by taking the effect of both that is your speed changes is your speed changes setting is changed and your load demand is also changed now at that juncture when both are changed you will be having the delta f delta f will be equal to 1 upon b plus 1 by r into into delta pc minus delta pd so it is what we have written is it is both the summation of uh, this factor plus the summation of this factor so this is uh, plus delta pc and this is minus delta pd because the input we are having here it is minus this is delta pd of s so that is why we got minus delta pd now whatever the increase in the delta pd so if delta pd is increased by some x amount and similarly if we increase the delta pc by that x amount then this delta pc will be equal to delta pd and this term will get cancelled and your delta f can be made zero that means by your whatever the increase in the load demand can be compensated by the speed change setting so that you can maintain your frequency as at a scheduled frequency that is without changing the frequency you can make the delta f is equal to zero and the load frequency characteristics as you can see so from 100% load to when you move to 60% load the frequency has decreased but if you compensate it with your delta pc then you can maintain the same frequency uh, near or almost the same and uh, at this load so you can uh, maintain the same frequency while changing the load so as the delta pd is changed you can still maintain the frequency once you change the speed in the city so this is what we can uh, uh, get the inference from this steady states analysis of load frequency control states what i mean to say is states is one is delta pc is equal to zero when you consider another one is delta pd of s is equal to zero so for both these states we are having two transfer uh, two analysis and uh, again later on we are combining these two analysis to know the effect of one upon other so this is all what i can explain in the steady states analysis of low frequency control of an isolated power system i hope you understood well please subscribe to the channel thank you